Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll be creating our first route. Let's begin by inserting an assembly. New, Assembly, and OK. In the Begin Assembly Property Manager, let's click the Browse button to browse for a component. I'm going to select Part 91. Click Open, and let's drop it somewhere here. Basically, I've got a simple part here with two one-inch holes. Before inserting components into our assembly, let's save the assembly. We'll call it 91, and save. Now let's expand the library panel. As you see, we've got two libraries available, the design library and the routing library. The routing library is actually part of the design library. Let's expand the routing branch. Let's expand tubing and then open flanges. All right, let's grab this flange and bring it into my assembly. Now watch what happens when I drag the flange around. It snaps to my holes. The reason for this is that this component in the library has the mate already built in. Let me release the mouse over this hole. SolidWorks prompts me to select a configuration for the flange. I'm going to use tube flange 1-150 and click OK. When I insert a routing component, SolidWorks assumes I want to start creating routes. The Route Properties Property Manager is open. Let's cancel out of that for now. That's because I'm going back to the library and I want to bring in a second flange now. We'll snap it to our second hole. Select the same configuration and click OK. The Route Properties Property Manager opens again. Let's cancel out of it. Now I've got two flanges in my assembly. Next, I'm going to create the tubing that connects these flanges together. Each flange has what's known as its C point, or the connection point. These C points were built into the library flanges. Let's see how we can view those. Click on the View menu and select Routing Points. Now when I mouse over the flange, the C points flag appears in red font. Let's right click when the C point appears and then select Start Route. The Route Properties Property Manager opens again. Let's begin by selecting the wall thickness. If we check Use Flexible Hose, we'll be able to use splines in our routing sketch. We can choose to save the tube as a multi body part as well. Let's scroll down the Property Manager. In the Bends and Elbows section, we can specify the bend radius. Let's go ahead and click OK for now. Now we're in the 3D sketch environment. I'm going to right click on the second C point and select Add to Route. As you noticed, the stub was automatically created and the Route Property Manager didn't open. The reason for this is that in order to connect both ends, both stubs have to have the same configuration, otherwise we're going to get an error message. We of course are able to connect pipes of different diameters, but to do so we'd need to insert a reducer somewhere in the middle. OK, let's connect these two points. We'll activate the Line tool to do that. And I'll basically connect these two points. Right-click and select to close the tool. Here's our bend radius, which we specified earlier. Let's exit the sketch. And we've finished creating our first route. Let's go take a look at our tree. We've got two more components here. Those are the flanges. Let's just drag this out so you can see better. And one subassembly here. Depending upon the method that we use to create the route, the components, such as these two flanges, can be placed inside or outside the subassembly. Inside the subassembly, I've got a route parts folder. The 3D supporting sketch for this route appears under Route 1. To edit the sketch, just right click on it and select Edit Route. 
Let me simply grab and move a point, for example. And let's exit the sketch. And this concludes our first route.